Using logic with an Apollo interface is different than most others. To start with, the signal flow is different in the audio preferences. I start by turning off software monitoring so I can monitor my signal through the Universal Audio Console software for direct monitoring with the DSP-based effects. So I've got that off, and the second change is to route the signal into the console app so that you can control logic's level there in terms of your mix to your mains or to your headphones. So to do that under I.O. assignments, normally we have the stereo output routed to stereo output 1-2. But what I like to do is route it to one of the virtual output pairs, and this number of virtual outputs might vary depending on the Apollo hardware you're using. For now, I'm using virtual output 1-2. And I have a simple drum loop here, and this is an empty project with some plain vinyl tracks, nothing special done. They're all routed to stereo output. When I hit play, you see it reaches the stereo output as normal. But when we look in the console software, I've got a return here for the virtual 1-2 channel strip, and we'll see that signal arriving here. So that's how we get the DAW signal into the console software. And if you want to customize what's appearing here, it's simple. We can go to the menu and then view show hide inputs. And then you just turn on or off whatever you want to see. In my case, I've turned off my ADAT inputs and the virtual inputs that I don't need. And then just click done. And that's how you customize what appears there. Now, in terms of setting up a headphone mix, there's a couple of different ways of approaching it. Let's say I'm going to track on this second channel strip and I want to monitor the signal in the headphones. I can call up this panel here and send to my QMix 1 and 2 optionally if I want to use the two separate headphone outputs. And then here in the Q outputs, I have Q1 going to the headphone 1 output on my Apollo 8P and QMix 2 going to the headphone 2 output. So that's fine. And then for logic, I can do the same thing here, call up this panel and just pull these up, and then Logic's internal mix will get routed to the headphones as well. And I can use these to control the balance in the headphones between the Logic return and the signal that I want to monitor as I'm tracking. So that's one way of doing it, but there's another way that I like better, which gives finer control, plus we have the benefit of being able to control it from within Logic. So back to here, I'm going to just select all the tracks in here, and I'm going to set up some sends, and I'm going to set the first one to an unused bus. Let's say I'll go to bus 7. And I'm just going to option click there to snap the multi-unity gain. And then I'll set another one up and go to bus 8, snap the multi-unity gain. So they're arriving at these auxes here. So what I'm going to do is instead of routing these to the stereo output, I'm going to route them to Q1 left and right directly, and then this one to Q2 left and right. So now I can control my headphone mix of the logic portion of the signal from within logic. So I can dial up as much or as little as I want from the individual tracks. And that's what's going to be feeding into QMix 1 and 2. So for example, this drum loop is here and I can customize how much I want. Let's say I'll have less going to QMix 2 and more going to QMix 1. And now if I play it, we can monitor these different levels in the console app. Here's the full mix. There's the QMix 1 level. And there's the lower QMix 2 level. So let's look at all this in a real world example. I've got my buddy Maury in the studio here to record some guitar, and he's set up on input 2. We have a Marshall Silver Jubilee setting with a nice sound. And I have as an insert on his channel strip the Lexicon 224 with the dry wet mix set for a nice blend. And more, you want to play a bit so we can hear the sound? Beautiful. Now I've got Sends set up here so that he's going to both the headphone mixes and he's got his headphones plugged into headphone 2, so he's getting the QMix 2 signal. And as we saw before, the Q outputs are set to go to headphone 1 and headphone 2. So back in Logic, I've got a project set up here. Here's a track that he's going to record on. And I've got headphone one and two sends set up on all the other tracks. I don't need it here because he's going to be monitoring through the console software. And these headphone sends are arriving at buses over here for headphone one and headphone two that are routed to the physical outputs for QMix one and QMix two so that they go straight to the headphone outputs. All right, let's give it a try. And 
now back in Logic, we can see in here that the guitar has been successfully recorded. And the amp effects and reverb have been printed to file. And while he was recording, Maury monitored the signal by virtue of all these tracks being routed to headphone one and two buses and then arriving at these two buses where they're routed to the physical hardware outputs QMix 1 and QMix 2, where they're then routed to the headphone outputs in console. <laughs> 